<laughs> Thousands have packed the Salt Palace as Fan X Salt Lake Comic Convention officially gets underway. And news for Utah's Glenn Beebe, he got the hard assignment today. He's out at the Salt Palace right now. So Glenn, big question here. Are you nerding out right now? Yeah. And if so, how hard? Uh, come on, Tim, you know me too well. Of course I'm nerding out. We are here live at Comic-Con, and I'm trying not to fanboy too much, but we are on Celebrity Row. You can see just how many people here. They want to meet, uh, hang out with people. They want to meet their favorite friends, uh, their favorite actors, and they are huge fans of them. They want to shake their hands, get some autographs. That's exactly what this area is all about. But this is just one part of the event. There are panels with artists and actors. They talk about their projects and shows. We've even seen some amazing amazing cosplayers as well. You know, it's extremely well done costumes and honestly it's uh, some of the best people watching you will ever see, but surprisingly even the celebrities tell us that they can't help but get excited for some of the actors they meet. So that's what makes these things kind of unique is you get to kind of fangirl over people that you've always admired, you know, like Michael J. Fox, like wow, what a, you know, like a hero, like just a hero. And speaking of the, some of those famous actors and actresses, we are joined now by John Wesley Shipp. John, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, you, you were the original Flash. That's that started, that started so long ago. <laughs> that started in 1990, but what was it like to kind of be a part of that original, you know, Batman was coming out then, then The Flash and some others, to be a part of that original where movies were really making it big? Looking at it from this perspective, it's really gratifying to know that we were sort of at the cutting edge of a new way of telling these stories for television. In 1990, comic books had not yet gone mainstream the way they have now. And so it was a little bit of a challenge to find and capture an audience. And also we didn't have CGI, so all of our effects were practical. If we wanted to blow up something and shoot flames 50 feet in the air, we had to really do it. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's really great to see the way it's paid off with the new show. And tell me about that because they invited you back. You're on the CW, which is our sister station, and now you've been you've been invited back to do the show. Did you ever think you would re redo the character? Never in a million years. I was so tired at the end of that 1990-91 season that Mark Hamill and I were in southeast L.A. doing the last shot of the series, and it was 5 a.m., and they yelled cut, and I took the wings off and threw him in the air, and Mark almost lost his mind. He was like, don't let him get away! And he got those wings, and he has them to this day. No, I never, I swore I would never get into another superhero suit. We'll never say never. Of course, they brought me back through Henry Allen, and when I had heard how Jeff Johns had changed the Allen story, and that the father was wrongfully convicted of killing the mother in front of a 10-year-old Barry, I was like, that's the character I would want. And so that's the character they offered. Then they did the bait and switch and turned me into Jake Eric, and I'm, I'm back in a superhero suit. What, what, you know. There we go. All right. Thanks so much for your time, John. I Thank appreciate you. it. And you can meet John and so many other people here. We're having a great time down at Fanex here at the Salt Palace. And of course, we will continue to bring you live co coverage from here. But if you do happen to be here or if you're coming down this weekend, be sure you stop by the ABC4 booth and say hi. Reporting live from the Salt Palace, I'm Glenn BB News for Utah.